Okay, well, hey, welcome to the uh, digital video meeting here. No, 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 no. Orange County Multimedia Association in its finest hour. <laughs> and Paul, our uh, past president, Paul Tetro, up in uh, Running Springs. Is that where you are, Running Springs? No. No. Falling Bear? Forest Falls. Forest Falls. I, it was one of those trick names. We've been there, I know. Mm -hmm. But uh, first, before we have him start his presentation, I think we were going to get a short announcement from Cynthia or Ivan about their meeting. Was that right? Take it away, Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I can't hear you. I'm way out on the golf course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, a couple of things. First off, our meeting next month, we will cover or start a series of, uh, of sessions on Premiere Rush, which is their Adobe's um, phone application as well as a desktop application to allow you to shoot video quickly and post it to social media very quickly. Um, so we're gonna be doing that. And then also we will have our raffle for the, um, for the Creative Cloud subscription. Uh, instead of doubling up this month, we decided to, to split it and, and get you to come back in, Jan in July. Yay! So <laughs> that's primarily what we're gonna do. We, may do. we may cover some other things. Also, I wanted to tell you, and I'll put this in a chat box on, uh, on the uh, Zoom call, uh, I have put uh, a file, it's a zip file up online uh, of 200 Photoshop brushes. Way back when, when I was talking, when I did my presentation on brushes, um, I got these from, uh, you know, from various sites online and combined them. And there, there's some nice ones. You, know, you can take a look at it, download it, see if, uh, if you want it, if not. It's, um, I think the file size is like 64, 65 megabytes. It's not a very large file, but it might uh, spur your creativity by uh, having those. So I'll make that available uh, in just a bit. And so you can go and download it uh, before our meeting ends. It, it'll be up there until, the, until Friday. And then after that, I'll be taking it down. So first of all, welcome everybody. It's good to be back amongst friends, uh, even though we're doing the Zoom meeting. Uh, nice not to have to drive down to Orange County from up here on the mountain. Um, so we're gonna be talking primarily about a video that I created that I've showed to a few people, including Bonnie, and she was really excited about the way that it turned out. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, uh, how it came about, how I did it, and then we'll have an opening for some uh, <coughs> questions. If you have any uh, questions on what I did, how I did, why I did. But it would certainly be better um, as we start to talk about it if you've actually seen it first. So in the chat box, wherever it is for you, um, <laughs> there's a link for a video that says Wagon Wheel. And if, you, if you're not familiar with it, there's a fairly popular tune um, called Wagon Wheel that in uh, the, the jam circles that I happen to frequent uh, is one of those just regular songs that lots of people like to play. So. Um, just to start off with, let me just say that, you know, uh, in addition to my love for multimedia, video production, photography, all that fun stuff that you and I share together, uh, I also get involved in music production and I play bass, a little bit of keyboards here and there. And um, so this is the, you know, uh, uh, product generated from, from that. So if you want to take just four or five minutes, I think it's only four minutes long. The YouTube link is up in the uh, chat box if you can kind of get to that. I would love it if everybody got a chance to take a look at it first. That way, as I'm going over the concept of it and some of the details, you'll know what I'm talking about. And may I suggest that everybody mute themselves while they go and watch it so that we don't hear it. Over yeah, <clears throat> so you know how to find it, you guys. Uh, uh, just go into the, click on the chat in the bottom there, a uh, little, little uh, icon there for chat, and then that'll show you up the, uh, the link. Here. But use command or control tab to chat be, to bounce between your things and make sure oh. you get back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Should we all do it now? Okay. Ready okay, to I'm going to mute myself and I'll be back in four or five minutes. It's okay. 648 right now. We'll resume back at 655. Okay. Oh, I love it. I love it. 
Nicely done. All right, that was great. I, uh, okay, we'll go ahead and get started now. Um, so the first thing I want to make sure everybody understands is we did not use Zoom to create that. Right. Zoom had nothing, nothing to do with the production of that. Um, I know that some of you can't show me your hands, but for those of you that can, let's do a quick show of hands. Let me know who has ever heard of a project called Playing for Change. No. Okay, well, that was the inspiration for this. Let me explain just a little bit about that organization. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't initially an organization, it's become one, but um, Playing for Change was initially a, a project uh, that was um, a, a, an idea, a, a video project from a, a, a film school student uh, by the name of Mark Johnson and his partner, Whitney, what is it? Uh, my readers now, Whitney Cronkey. And they wanted to uh, basically, using their video cameras, film cameras, get some footage of a bunch of people playing um, uh, on street corners, okay? And in 1923, they, or next, 2005, I don't know why I said 1923, and then 2005, <laughs> uh, Mark was in Santa Monica and he saw a gentleman playing, sitting on the curb, uh, a, a bag in front of him, just literally playing streets, you know, um, He's a street musician playing songs with a bag in front of him, literally playing for people's coins. So you could say that he was playing for change. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, he was inspired by this performer that he saw. He didn't have his cameras with him that day because he didn't want to, uh, you know, just surreptitiously record things he didn't have permission to. But after the guy was done with that particular song, he said, that was great. Can I come back tomorrow? And with my, my cameras and my microphones and capture the performance that you just did, again on film. And uh, the gentleman's name was Roger Ridley. And he said, yeah, sure. So, um, you know, Mark and Whitney came back the next day with their audio stuff and their film stuff and recorded him playing. And then they took that video and they took it around the world. You know, uh, Amsterdam, Venezuela, Italy, Spain, uh, the Navajo Nation. And just, they had all these different musicians play with that video that they shot in Santa Monica, okay? And then putting it all together, it was their vision that this project would allow for the you know, global peace and harmony. So they, they were literally trying to use this project so people could be playing for global change. So the name playing for change, starting with the street musicians and then you know, coming to a worldwide opportunity for peace and love was, you know the where they got the name so I'm, I'm a sucker for clever things to start with so uh, I was doubly inspired when I fell in love with the the piece that they did much like Bonnie was talking about my video I felt that way you know even more so with the playing for change so when you get a chance let me go ahead and put this over in the chat too um, one of these days you're gonna want to check this out All right, so I just put that video link in there. And if you're interested in finding out more about the organization, I'm going to um, put their website video in there as well. I am not affiliated with Playing for Change at all. I'm just totally inspired by them. So, um, or it says PFC website, that's Playing for Change. Um, they had actually done so well and gotten so many views. They're, they're up to several you know, hundred million views uh, worldwide. And uh, after this first one, it caught the attention of some media moguls like David Geffen. And how many of you guys know David Geffen's name? Is anybody familiar with that one? Okay, good. He's part of the Spielberg's SKG. The G mm. is Geffen. So he's, you know, playing with some big players up there. And uh, so anyway, they started doing many more of these. So there's probably 20, 30 different playing for change videos with this concept format style that they're doing now. And they've got everything from reggae to country to pop and folk. And so if you, if you like the first one, which is, the song is Stand By Me, which was originally done by Benny King, the, the um, lead singer of the Drifters. Remember Stand By Me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's a song that he's starting with. And it was really kind of cool because that, that song, just even the lyrics alone, have a lot to do with the project they're talking about as far as conceptual. Uh, so anyway, um, having been inspired by that, I um, wanted to create a project very similar. Now, 
I told you before that I, I'm a musician. I play bass. Just want to interrupt you a second, Paul. I just got that notice that said your meeting will end in 10 minutes. What? Upgrade for more time. Now? And Yeah. And I don't know that... Uh, usually they say, you've been extended. But I have no guarantee they will. Hmm. All right. Well, let me go quick. Um, Do what I you can. Bass. We can continue. Go ahead. All right. So um, I'm a bass player. And unfortunately, most people don't want to listen to bass by itself. No, no one really likes to stand for a bass solo. So uh, when I play, I typically play with other folks. And so being inspired by the, the program Playing for Change, I said, I want to do this with some of my friends. Up on the mountain, I don't get a chance to play with a lot of people. So I go down the hill to Redlands, Ukaipa, Highland. And down there, a variety of the watering holes have open mic nights, you know, where anybody who wants to can kind of sign up for their little slot sing three or four songs and then the next person goes on well um again people don't want to hear a bass player so i asked I, I listen to the people that are playing figure out what songs they like learn them and then ask them if i can play with them during their set and they've been very generous and so i've been able to play with a lot of different people in you know you know several times a week and so i figured i would take this particular group of people which is it's not a band it's just a bunch of people all playing the same watering holes you know, on a kind of regular schedule. We got guitarists, we got singers, we got mandolin players, we've got ukulele players, blah, 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 blah. And so um, I wanted to create a project based on this. So that's where uh, uh, this whole kind of thing started. So um, the um, one gentleman by the name of Chuck Craw, who played Wagon Wheel on a regular basis, uh, got to be a song that a lot of us would jam to. And um, so I, I figured I'm gonna, I was going to use him as my start point. So I talked to Chuck about the project and uh, we scheduled a time that he and I could get together and shoot. Um, my idea was to go to a variety of these watering holes and do all this kind of stuff on a person by person basis. But we started off by going to Chuck in his house and it was good because I, I got him recorded like two days before he moved to Minnesota. So I didn't have to drive all the way to Minnesota to, to catch him. So I got him here in Redlands, recorded his, um, what I'm calling the master track. And for anybody that wants to do something like this, I highly encourage that you start with a master track. Some of you have been seeing a lot of different video projects online that people are doing, and it looks like they're playing together. They're not. There is, there's, Zoom sucks for synchronized video production. I don't know if anybody's trying to do anything, but you'll notice whenever you say something, there is a lag, even if it's you know, uh, you know, half a second, but if you hear the half a second later and you try to play to that, now it's going to be a full second before your stuff gets back to them. So it just doesn't work. There's a couple of um, media platforms like Zoom that are trying to create a special, you know, latency free environment uh, like Jam Kazam. I don't know if everybody's ever heard of that. <clears throat> but everybody that plays has to have a special piece of equipment that does analog to digital conversion on the fly before they even hook in to the... Uh, you know, audio video stuff. So anyway, um, I got the um, track of Chuck and he's one that kind of starts things off when he's, he's the one that's singing the main thing and you saw him playing guitar. I shot that with my Canon DSLR. Everything else you see in here is cell phone footage by the actual artists themselves because as the pandemic locked us all in, I wasn't able to go out and shoot everybody. So I had to ask them to, you know, put their camera out, use the master track. I, 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 I actually created a, um, a Google Drive account and then invited everybody to get onto that so they could take the Chuck video, my master track, download it, play to it, and then send me their file. I created the Google Drive because unfortunately I didn't realize right off the bat that of course, these video files are going to be way too big to send via email. And Dropbox just doesn't, just doesn't cut it as well as it used to. How many of you have already kind of given up on Dropbox? Have you used Google Drive? Google Drive's pretty good. I, I like it much, much better. So anyway, um, let me put the Chuck on the back burner for just a second and explain Wagon Wheel for just a minute. Um, Wagon Wheel uh, is something that a lot of people think they've heard before. And Bob Dylan actually created the chorus as a jam back in 1973, but he never made it an actual song. It wasn't until 
like 25 years later that a band called Old Crow Medicine Show wrote the rest of the song out to an actual song. And then they had a hit with it and it went platinum and it's been covered a, a, for a few times. Um, maybe, you know, 10 years after they had their hit with it, Darius Rucker had a, a, a hit playing Wagon Wheel again. Has anybody heard the Darius Rucker version of uh, Wagon Wheel? Do you remember who Darius Rucker is? He was the previous lead singer for Hootie and the Blowfish. Remember Hootie? So now we got a very popular black country star, which hasn't happened very often. Yeah. Playing a hit that was written by Old Crow Medicine Show that was based on a riff by Bob Dylan. And yet um, it's being played at all of the different, you know, open mic and jam nights and all that kind of stuff all over the United States. So it's a very popular song. So anyway, um, we, um, I, that, that's the song that I chose to, to, to do this with. So anyway, um, now that you've actually seen the video and I've given you a little bit of background as to what I wanted to do and how I started it off, I do want to mention a couple of things. I just totally blew it um, in getting this project going. So if you got pencil and paper, now's the time to take some notes because I'm going to give you a few do's and don'ts. I've already given you one fairly important do, and that is use Google Drive. It's a great way to work with a group of people when you've got large files and uh, you want to be able to assign only these people can have them, only these people can have them, and um, you know, get their content up to you. You do have to manage it. Like Dropbox, it's got its, it's, it's, got its amount that's free, and you can still have to maybe pay more if you want unlimited. Okay, but Google Drive. Um, so let me mention a couple of things I messed up on. Number one, I was so excited to get this thing going, I didn't think about everything I needed to do. So I, um, I didn't really account for wind noise, right? The camera microphone is set back in the camera and you can't put a windsock on it, okay? Not a windsock, a windscreen. You know, on the microphones that you see on stages and stuff like that, you put a big foam, you know, thing on top of a microphone, and that cuts down a lot of wind. You can't do that on a, a camera's microphone. So I did use an outboard recorder, and that really helped. So um, the problem with that, if it's a problem at all, is you've got to marry up the audio and video, which are not inherently part of the same thing, which is the benefit when you shoot with an actual camera. So um, if you're wondering what piece of equipment I use, uh, it's called a Zoom H4N recorder. And you can actually record, uh, it's got uh, microphones on the top that are set in the XY position and two XLR connectors in the back. So you can actually record four different channels simultaneously. I was doing a stereo record, so I didn't need all four. I used the X and Y mics that were on there and I got a great, here's okay. the Zoom recorder. Oh yeah, I've got one just like that. And it's got a nice big foam. It just goes right on top. And that knocks down a ton of wind uh, noise. So I have a question, Paul. Sure. Um, you said that to get, to bring everybody together, you sent them the, the major, you know, like the core track, right? The first one that you recorded. Yeah. And then they sang to it. So I'm assuming that when they recorded themselves, that track was also in the background. And then what, you just had to pull it out it could you be know. it could be in the background or they could wear headphones either one a lot of people wore those little white uh iphone earphones yeah 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 and other people if, if the track was in the background it really didn't hurt too much it's not like a car driving by where it's disturbing it just becomes a little it almost helped me line things up i see i can i can hear where they're supposed to be but um what i did is i posted the chuck master on youtube so they could play YouTube from their computer while they're using their cell phone to record themselves. Very clever. Yeah. No, I, I thought it was really, it was really good. It was really, um, you know, it was fun to watch. I, I wanted some of the, the, um, the singing to be a little stronger. Yeah. You know, cause it, the, the music. Well, let's, let's, kind of, let's talk about some of those difficulties. Cause yeah, I, I'm sure that that was that. hard. I mean, if you're recording on an iPhone, that's really hard to control. It would be nice if everybody had the same phone. That brings me to my next <laughs> problem. You know, some guy's using a Samsung. Somebody's using, right. uh, you know, something else. And mm -hmm. you know, I totally, I totally forgot to tell them use 30 frame per second, use 1920 by 1080. So I got 
every <laughs> 24 frames, 720, 1080. I'm like, ah, it's coming in. And it's like, so, you know, in, in the list of things you want to make sure you do, prep your people, yeah. tell them what settings you want, teach them how to use their damn phone if you have to. Um, but, you know, it, it, I was, the other thing I did that was on, that was right is using Premiere. I don't know about other programs, but in the, in the, the current version of Premiere and a couple of versions back, you can put 24 frame and 30 frame on the same timeline. You can put 720 and you can put uh, 1080 on the same timeline. You do have to do a little bit of shimmy and shake to get them to work. You know, I, I have them playing the same song but they don't end at the same place when they're starting at the same place. So sometimes I had to cut up the track, little micro spaces of space. Like you start it here and you go, oh, it's off track by here. So you cut it, you move it, and you uh, cut it, move it. So there was a little bit of that. Unfortunately, there was 12 different musicians who actually responded to my request. I, pro I probably asked 25 people to do this project with me. They all seemed really excited. Only 12 people gave me anything, and two people gave me two tracks. So you might have noticed that the girl that plays accordion also has a completely separate uh, backing vocals track. And the guy that played mandolin also played harmonica. Okay? So 14 tracks, 12 performers um, is what I had to manage putting them on there. Okay? The other thing I didn't pay attention to, which I should have, is the harsh sunlight of midday sun. If you look at the, you know, the master track video, even though I shot it with a better camera than a cell phone, he was wearing a baseball hat, was going right down over his eyes, and I had to make sure he tilted up, and then even after I recorded it, it was still really dark all over his face, so I had to use my uh, video effects in Premiere to light it up using a, a levels modification. So I, I should have done a better job. I, I should have brought my uh, six by six, you know, um, diffuser screen. Y'all know what a diffuser screen is? Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a white sheet that has a certain level of translucence. So when you put a light or sunlight behind it, you're creating controlled shade. And that would have gone a long way to making the overall image more manageable. So if you've ever had to shoot in midday sun, you know, you know what that's like. Oh, uh, and I, I should not have let him wear his ball cap, but you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Put it on right. backwards. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good idea. Um, the a couple other things that I did that were definitely a plus, and write these down on your list of things that you want to make sure you do. Wear headphones when you're recording audio. You can't just take it for granted. You have no idea what's going on in the background. That's where I heard the wind noise and realized I needed to like do multiple takes so that way the wind's not always going to be in the same place on each track so if i got two maybe three takes i can blend it all together and not worry about there was wind here or whatever so um, multiple takes a big plus wearing headphones a big plus using an outboard audio recorder big plus and make sure you have a some way of suppressing the wind noise like that microphone windscreen. If you've got a really nice long microphone, like a, a shotgun mic, those work pretty good in these situations, but they have these things that go over it called a dead cat. How many of you have seen or worked with a dead cat before? Anybody see a, a, like a, a sound operator with their boom pole and this really fuzzy thing at the end? That's a dead cat. Okay, um, so we talked about a couple of do's and don'ts. We talked about uh, the background. Um, we're talking a little bit about how we gathered the content. Um, definitely, if you get a chance, make sure you are, you know, giving them your preferred settings in advance. The master clip I did was 1920 by 1080. Fortunately, I only got two sizes. I got uh, 1920 by 1080 and 720. Um, so the, the two standard HD sizes. So it wasn't too bad. Um, I did get 24 frame and 30 frame, so anyway. The other thing is, is make sure that you tell your people who you're gonna be using in this to keep their, their cell phones relatively close to them. Did we talk about proximity effect already? Or did I just talk to uh, Terry and Bonnie about that earlier? 
How many of you have heard of proximity effect? Do you know what that means? The further away you are from your microphone, it cuts down the available audio. Like every foot you move away, it cuts down half of the actual DB. So if they're 20 feet away, using a cell phone, it's, you know, you're gonna have very low levels to manage. You want something that's, you know, you'd rather turn it down than have to turn it up to the point you can't even turn it up anymore. All right, so try to make sure that they keep their microphone relatively close. If they're using an outboard recorder or if you're using an outboard recorder like I, I recommended, then um, you can put the microphone close and still have the camera back. That's kind of cool. Uh, Cause a couple of the clips that are in there look really cool that the, you can almost have like a full body of the, the person. Did you see the, 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 the clip of the, the gal playing violin? It was nice to have all that background and stuff in there to kind of break, break it up a little bit. But um, the audio that came from the mandolin player and the accordion gal, so much easier for me to work with because they were right there. You know, it's a head and shoulders kind of a thing. All right. Um, the other thing I forgot to do is I did not give them an, uh, uh, an immediate deadline. I said, ah, just do it. Get back to me. We'll see what happens. And, oh, man, it just took me forever to get anybody to give me anything because they can always do it tomorrow. I finally had to start calling and say, hey, I'm going to start editing that thing. Are you in or out? You know, and, you know, kind of really turn the screws a little bit. So uh, that was pretty important. Paul? Yeah. Yeah, did you, uh, when you were using the 4N, did you do stereo? Did you yes. record stereo? Yes. Okay. What about, yeah. Did you convert that to mono afterwards? It's got, no, no. It's got, the, con it's got the built in XY. Right. The only time I had to convert it to mono was for YouTube. So okay. whenever I play it for people on my computer or if I want to put it on my own website or anything like that, I still have a stereo version as well. But suffice to say, most people recorded it on their cell phone. So a lot of the stuff that came in was already set for mono, but I still at least have the ability to pan. So if I really want to, from a sound editing perspective, I can still, you know, put the sounds in different places. I do want to talk about a couple of the techniques that were really worked out for me. So um, the first thing is manage your audio first. Once you have, have shot everything, you've used Google Drive to bring it into your computer and you start to set up the Adobe Premiere project, of course, you're going to be using the project window to manage all your assets. Um, bring over your master track into the timeline first, and that will set the standard for all your settings for the main that you're going to go output to. And then everything else will conform to that master because that's what they, that's what they all played to. So that should be your project beginning point. Okay. The next thing I did is one, one at a time, I brought each musician into track two, three, four, and just, I placed them and then I would move them left or right based on the start of the guitar, which made it very difficult since I did not ask for a one, two, three, four. We didn't have that. He just started playing. So if you can remember again, in your list, make sure somebody gives a count. And the second video I did, which I'll give you a link to later if you're interested, I actually did like a one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't say seven and eight, so it gave me some cutting room, but they already had the beat going and they knew when everyone was coming in. Have you ever watched a, a, a movie or a TV show about like TV news? And they always say, okay, you're on in four, three. And they're all quiet for the two and the one because they want to make sure that there's some, you know, cutting and fade up room. So make sure you do a count. And if you can, a whole click track would be great, but at least a count. So several little faux pas I did when I was making this would have made it a whole lot easier. But in the meantime, I had to take every single track and move it a little left or a little right. So it gets right on there. Fortunately, there were some pretty prominent sound cues that allowed me to, you know, move it into place. Once you get one track where you want it, you have to listen to it all the way to the end because it might not end in sync, even though you started it in sync, but based on the iPhone settings or not iPhone, but any cell phone settings. So again, if you have to cut it into more pieces and kind of slide them down, put a little bit of gap in between each one, then you got to do that. Um, so that's just something to kind of keep in mind.
once you have all the tracks of audio in, lock them. Lock them. I don't know about you, but this is the mouse that I use. It's a wireless Mac mouse. Does anybody else use a mouse like this? It, 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 it sees my finger hovering above the mouse, and sometimes it'll jump when I didn't mean for it to. And yeah. a couple of times I'd be moving the mouse over and I'd accidentally select a track and it did something. I'm like, whoa, what did it do? So now <clears throat> if I'm not making a modification to a track, I lock it. Lock it. And that way if I accidentally slip or move or hover or whatever I'm doing that it doesn't like, doesn't like nothing's going to be affected. All right. So it may seem tedious to lock and unlock and lock and unlock and lock and unlock all your tracks, but it's, it saved me. Um, before you lock it, the one thing, another thing I recommend you do, once you get your audio just the way that you want it, everything's synced, all the tracks are working, you've managed all your audio so you like the way that it sounds, you want to unlink those clips from their video because you want the whole audio, but you only want spots of video. So we get what I'm talking about? Okay. So you want to unlink your audio from your video so when you start cutting your video, you don't lose the audio that goes with it. So you want the video to be in its place and locked, and then you'll be able to cut the, the, the video however you want. Now, you can always unlock it. Matter of fact, you're going to have to unlock it for the next thing I want to talk about. When you do finally put your video clips where you want them, who's ever on screen for any given time, you need to go back to their audio track, unlock it, and then raise their volume because they're being spotlighted in that place. So you can hear a little bit of the violin the whole way through, but when she's on screen, you wanna go up, so she becomes a prominent component that you're listening to, and then back down again when she's no longer on the screen, and then the next person goes up, okay? Um, here's another thing. I talked about um, the audio, when you, when, if, if, if the microphone is not close to the subject and it gets really far away, 10, 15, 20 feet away, you only have so much. How, how many of you have noticed that when you're playing around with the rubber band on the audio track in Premiere, you can only go to 6 dB? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So how do you get more video? Or how, how do you, actually not more video, but how do you get more audio when you're already at max? Tell, tell. Yes, I'll tell you. Um, you know, let me, I'm, I'm going to switch over right now to Premiere so I can show you a few things. Is it okay if I steal the screen? Okay, here we are. Um, I'm in the middle. This is my, my, obviously my timeline down here, the window I'm working with. Um, you see everything's locked over here on this side. Can everybody see the locks over in the timeline? I am going yeah. to, yes, no, maybe do I, do I need to get rid of you, all the pictures of all you guys? Does that help? Okay, so oh, we, gonna, we couldn't see them, but we have to take them off, click to minimize them on our own screens to see your whole screen. All right, but the, 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 uh, the locks for each track are over here. They're in little blue dots. Yeah, we okay. can see that. So I'm going to unlock a couple tracks just to give you as an example what I'm talking about. So you can see down here in the, um, the audio section, all the ups and downs for who's ever peaking at any given time. But if I take a particular track, let's say for instance, like um, who is really low? Cindy on bass was a little on the low side. So I'm gonna click on one of her tracks over here and that should show up. Of course, I think one didn't have it. Okay, hang on. All right, can everybody see volume? If, if you look in the actual effects control box, it says volume up here. I put a whole nother volume in right here. So I could only go up to 6 dB, but by putting an, another instance of volume, I could go basically equivalent of 12. <clears throat> so down here under audio effects, you can choose volume. And if you just drag volume, up into here, you can get a whole other instance of it. Oh, how nice. Okay. Cool. That's what I did is um, to make sure anything that was too low was able to be um, uh, 
you know, brought up. And so if you're, if you're peeking on your, your audio uh, rubber bands down here with the uh, pen tool, then, um, you know, adding another instance of volume as an effect will give you that much more room to work with. All right. Um, the other thing I want to talk about as long as we have this up here is back over in the uh, video side, you notice how many you know, tracks I've got going on here? We, we talked about 14 different tracks, plus a title track, plus 12, possibly even more uh, audio tracks. Uh, it was critical to be able to hit the tilde. So if you're on your timeline, you hit the tilde key and go full screen so you can see everything. Oh yeah, that's, that's great. Now it takes about four seconds of lag here between your screen and ours. Okay, I just wanna make sure everyone knows that you can hit the tilde key to go full there, screen. The there it is, on. there it is, yeah. And then you tilde back, and if you wanna say, for instance, go over to the, uh, you know, the monitor window and see things full screen every so often, then you would just make sure you select that window. You can see the little blue halo around the thing, and then hit the tilde key again. And now you're looking at your video full screen, which, which you need to do. We are now, yes. Yeah, so you can't, you can't just work out of a little window the whole time. You really need to go back and forth. The other thing I wanted to show you is when I got to special area, the, the, most of the video starts off with all the players playing individually, but you can hear everybody. And that was starting to get a little monotonous to me. So um, I started to add multiple people on the screen at the same time. So like here, we've got Wendy and Jim on the screen at the same time. Does anybody remember how to do this? It has to do with shrinking your video down and probably cropping it, right? Cropping. And then Crop changing the position, the scaling. So let me show you over okay. here again in the effects side. I'm gonna change the size of this window over here so it's less project and more effects. This time, instead of audio effects, I'm gonna go into video effects. And if I know the name of it, which is crop, I can just type it in and it'll automatically find it for me because I wouldn't have remembered that I was underneath transform, right? So sometimes just using the search bar is a better way if you already know what's going on. But the crop tool itself, and notice I've got the, uh, um, let's see, I don't know if I've got that in here. I gotta, um, I'm gonna unlock this track with our accordion player and then click on it. And then you can see, you don't have to crop both of them. You only have to crop one or the other, but it looks like I'm, uh, you know, I use Jim. You'll see over here on crop, you can actually manage the position of the left side, right side, um, you know, top and bottom, and the, the zoom factor if, if you need to. Um, it becomes a choreography of the video clip and its proportions and its edges. So it, it takes a while for you to figure out when does it come in? When does it not come in? So not only are these measurements here, but they're all keyframed because they're changing over time. If you want that kind of roll in effect or, so like when these came in, you know, she is actually on uh, the, the left side, but she's on the right side of her own screen. So she yeah. had to be moved, she had to be time frame. And then um, when, she, when, when Tommy came in over here on the right, he kind of rolled down from the, from the top so you've got to keyframe the position, the scale, and the, posi the, uh, the, the crop percentage of the top left, bottom, and right. Um, but anyway, the, the crop tool is one that I use extensively to get those particular effects going. And, and of course, the very end piece over here, where I had all 12 people on the screen at the same time, that took a lot of finessing. I intentionally did not try to make them even because that can drive you nuts. What I did is I kind of like made them overlap and have different edges. So it doesn't look like it was ever meant to be lined up. And so if you intentionally do it that way, it's got this overlay quilty type of a, of a look to it. The key with this, however, <clears throat> is determining your end positions first and then positions after so you can choreograph where they're coming from and how fast. So the, the, the technique, the key here in this 12 people on the screen at one time concept is create your end position first. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now so I can see your lovely faces, getting back to having everybody to, to, to work with here. Yes, thank you, Terry, you're lovely. Um, <laughs> let me see what else I wanted to, if in my notes, if I've got anything else I wanted to mention. 
We talked about the tilde. We talked about, oh, um, the segment that we, we, I showed you where they, um, they're kind of on the screen all by themselves, and then the title comes up on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? So you know who they are and where they're from. Yeah. They all have the same font, same font size, same placement. What made that really easy is you make the first one, then you copy it, change the name, and then change the content. So when you copy it and change the name, the new file has the exact same settings as the last one. You go in and you just change the name of the person, the name of the city, and everything else is already still in place. That saved a ton of time. Mm. So instead of saying uh, file, new, title, and we're like, what did I do? What were those settings? What font did I wear? Because so many things look the same or sound the same or feel the same. And then you might say, oh, I forgot to put a shadow on that one. It, just copy the old one, change the content. Yeah, right? good tip. Oh, here's another one that helped really well. If I did a graphic move for uh, like, like two on a screen, and then later on, I wanted to be something very similar to that, but with different video. Did you know that you can copy a video clip and then select a new one? And when you say paste, you can paste just the attributes so it doesn't replace the clip that you want with the old stuff. It only puts the settings on there. So if you've had oh, success yeah. once, you can recreate that by pasting the attributes and you can select with a little checkbox exactly which attributes you want to select. So if it's just duration, fine. If it's just, um, uh volume fine if you want to do just like a, a ramp up and ramp down to the opacity you can you can copy and paste just attributes that was very helpful for me when i was doing this yeah i've, I've done that with a uh, color correction color grading mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. yeah just paste attributes that's just really great the other thing i wanted to uh, uh, impart to you is you know the, the video project once it was done i liked it it was good but I felt just starting with the guy playing was a little amateur. So I added on an opening. How many of you like that little, little opening I put on? I thought it was, yeah, it was pretty cute. So I tried to make it look like an old silent film movie card that would come up and, you know, say something like, like there's, you know, footage and there's a card that says, ah, or whatever, you know, the, the, their version of audio back in the silent movie days. And mm -hmm. I was actually able to go online and, and find a, um, uh, uh, I just I just Googled uh, silent movie film placard and I got a half a dozen things I could choose from. <laughs> and then I, I pulled that into After Effects and just did a little bit of um, brightness and, you know, kind of like flickering type stuff like the, with the, using the wiggler with some lumin luminous uh, elements to make it look like it had a, a, a had a film flicker in it. Nice. So um, the audio that's in there. Uh, there was a point where the banjo player was playing something really kind of lightweight in the background. I pulled that in so I, my, my intro would not be silent. And then there was a point where the girl who was singing backup vocals for the chorus was humming during another part. And she was just trying to get her, um, her, her voice in the right spot. And she knew I would cut that out. What she didn't realize, I actually used that in the very beginning <laughs> over the banjo just to create a little bit of flavor. So that was kind of fun. The point that I'm making about it is get your main video done first so all the pressure's off, and then you can play around with some fun stuff after. If you had a deadline that you're approaching, the main project being done, if it didn't have an intro, so be it. You did the main job. But if you got some time left, then you can really gussy it up and take the thing to a new level with some really fun little elements. And because the film placard was kind of in a uh, black and white, it was, it was actually more of a sepia tone, but um, because it was in that kind of monochrome element, when the video first started, I just drove that right in and made him show up in black and white and then brought him into the color world on, on a simple uh, keyframe for color. There's a black and white filter you can get as a video effect and you can just keyframe that to drop down like opacity. So that, that became my opening. And you know, if, if you're gonna do it, you should bookend it correctly at the end of any given video. Even though this one was for fun and it was for free, um, give yourself and everybody that was involved some credit. So don't forget to add the credit. So many videos I see that are posted on YouTube or done with this, that, or the other, um, it just ends and it ends. But I mean, 
this took some time, it took some effort, and I'm hoping that some of the people that see this really like it, and what the hell, having my name and address on the back of that, they might shoot me an email and say, hey, I like what you did, let's do some business. There you Nothing go. wrong with that. Nice. I'm just saying, if you're gonna do something with a lot of things on screen, the uh -huh. end position is important. Uh -huh. So make sure you okay. get that first, then decide how they're gonna come flying in, when, okay. how far, but get your end coordination first. Because if you, if you have them yeah. all set up on the edges, you, you, it's gonna be so much harder to maintain the choreography to get them yeah. all together. So right. start with your end position and then work backwards from there. Okay, good, all right. Nice okay. tip. Very good, yeah, that's great. Is anybody thinking about doing a music video while we're all here in lockdown? Uh, I've been doing a couple for the blues groups in Orange County, so okay. I, I, I like it all. I've been using Premiere on them myself, yeah. Well, I'm gonna open up my chat thing here again real quick while you're doing the uh, raffle, and I'm gonna throw a video for the next one that I just finished. I wanted to do another oh, video with a different group of people, and um, I didn't want it to be exactly the same as what I did for Playing for Change, because if you look at the Playing for Change videos, they're all, thematically the same the only thing that's different is the players and the song but i wanted a little visual mix-up so i'm going to show you this john denver song that we did i got my when you get a chance folks take me home country roads is the latest one that i just did before we do the raffle god paul this is great you did such hold on <laughs> you did a great job very Thanks. thorough i took a whole page of notes Really hey, we great. have it recorded so you can watch it yeah again. so it's really great thank you so much i really appreciate it my pleasure i'm glad you yeah. guys call me back yeah it's always fun to yeah. play with you guys yeah